Games rated E to M. Welcome to Nintendo Power Podcast. This episode, we look at big fall games out now and coming soon, like Luigi's Mansion 3. My name is Chris Slade, and joining me today is Katie Casper from the Publisher and Developer Relations Group at Nintendo of America. Hi, Katie. Hey, Chris. How's it going? Good. How are you? Thanks for coming on the show. And I think this is probably your third or fourth time by now, right? Yeah. Uh, being from Chicago, doing like three-peat style is totally in line with my, my brand. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, one more time, you get the free sandwich. Free sandwich, I would, you know... I. <laughs> Now, in this episode, we're going to dig into a lot of new games that have come out recently or will be coming out soon. And we're going to kick things off with the games that have been eating up all our time lately. We call this segment Pro's Picks. Now, as usual, this is where we talk about uh, all the games we've been enjoying lately. Um, Katie, let's have you started off. What games have you been playing? So I just came off of a 200-hour Fire Emblem Three Houses run, uh, <laughs> and I think I kind of went in a little too deep. Uh, knowing that the DLC, there's going to be at least two more waves to that, I ended up doing every single path, kind of squeezing the game dry, so to say, until the DLC does come out. Um, Man, I just, I, I'm a huge strategy game fan, and I've loved Fire Emblem since the first one came out in the U.S. back in, I think it was 2003, the first Fire Emblem. So this was this was the strategy fix that I was craving um, on our system. The last one that I had played strategy-wise was Wargroove. Um, so a little similar, but a little different. Uh, the classroom stuff, I think at first I was a little hesitant about how much I would like that aspect of it. But... I actually ended up look, really looking forward to that. Like in between the battles, it kind of changed the pace to go from that intense strategy to a more mellow classroom setting. So I think it was a really, really good blend of, uh, I guess, simulation and strategy. Yeah, that was a totally new element that, like you said, really gave the game a different flow. Um, so it is a really interesting mix of something that's brand new and something that you know is very tried and true with the, with the series. We talked about this game, of course, a lot uh, last episode. And uh, I'm sad to update the listeners that I haven't progressed much farther in the game because a little game called uh, The Legend of Zelda Link's Awakening came out and I still have to get back to Astral Chain. So my my to do pile keeps getting bigger and bigger. But but Fire Emblem Three Houses is definitely near the top. Really enjoying it. Yeah, well, I, you know, Link's Awakening is I started that up just now, too. Uh, So I am as far as I just got through the. Uh, what is it? The bo- bottle grass grass du- dungeon? Gosh, I can't remember all the names. They all have unique names. It's the second dungeon. Mm-hmm. Uh, so just got through that, and now I'm on the side quest where you give the I get I guess his name is Sale. He likes dog food, so we got to get him some dog food. Oh yeah, he's like the <laughs> crocodile or the alligator who lives in the hut by the beach. Yeah, just a banana trader. You know, just the usual. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, that's that's definitely the game I've been playing the most uh, lately. I played all the way through it, and um, I'm still trying to find. There's like one last little piece of heart I haven't found, and I have no idea where it is. There's like five secret seashells I haven't found either, and uh, my spirit is almost broken. I've been all over the map, searching every corner, and have yet to hear the the uh, the ding that alerts me to the fact that there is yet another secret seashell uh, nearby. But uh, I'm not giving up yet. Before before turning to the internet to find out what the solution is, I'm gonna give it another try. You need I don't what are, the metal detector is what a compass in this version. It kind of gives you a ding. I don't know if that does it in the overworld or not, but yeah, it's uh, definitely in the overworld, and I think that's the only place you find the seashells, mm. um, and that's the only what it works for. Um, you can turn it on or off, I guess, if you really want to to grind it out and and uh, not give yourself any any help. You can uh, try it to find all the seashells without it, but. Uh, as soon as I got that thing, I flipped it on and haven't flipped it off since. It's been it's been a huge help. I, Except I, uh, until now, basically. For sure, I play the same way. Even with Breath of the Wild, it's like I respect the people that turn the Shika sensor off, but I'm I I get I get terribly lost. I'm I'm okay in real life, but in game, I just I need I need a compass. I need help. So we we kept yeah. this, we kept that on. And it's it's funny you mentioned uh, the Legend of Zelda: Breath of the Wild because you know obviously that's for a lot of people, myself included, that was the last Legend of Zelda game that we spent a, a ton of time on, and it was also one of the most um, kind of different types of of games in the series that we've seen in years. 
So in a way, you could say it kind of reestablished the the classic formula. So um, I was really curious to go back to, you know, The Legend of Zelda Link's Awakening after having played, you know, hundreds of hours in the other game and and experience a more traditional uh, Legend of Zelda type of, of adventure. And I was curious how, you know, would it feel a little dated? Would it, but actually, no, I th- think the game holds up very well and was almost kind of like a refreshing change to get back to that kind of classic formula after having spent so much time with uh, Breath of the Wild. Yeah, I, I agree. I I find that at least Link's Awakening, you know, narrative wise, it's a lot more whimsical, you know, not just in, in tone and story, but, you know, you encounter those Mario characters and such. But, you know, with Link to the Past, kind of establishing that tried and true formula of, you know, like the three dungeons, you get the sword, then you've got some sort of afterworld that you explore. Link's Awakening did kind of, for me, go back to that original Legend of Zelda where there's no time skip, there's no alternate world. You just, you find, you your adventure is on the world itself. And it's an interesting world. I For those that haven't had a chance to play the original uh, from back in the day, I highly advise going back and revisiting this classic. Yeah. And it's not a small game by any means. I think I, I kind of said as much um, talking about my hunt for those last few items, but um, that's another thing that impressed me, especially when you bring it off of the Game Boy screen and you flesh it out with with uh, the more modern graphics and, and all the other kind of enhancements that they made to the Nintendo Switch version. It it really feels like, you know, a, just as, as, as big of an adventure as you might find from a game that was made, you know, here in 2019. So um, just having a lot of fun with that game. And and uh, I knew that I, I really loved the kind of adorable, cute aesthetic of the game, but... Um, uh, I was surprised by how much I enjoyed the music and the sound effects. Like even the sound effects, it's like when you slash a uh, Octorok, he makes this little squeaky toy sound. Mm-hmm. It just makes you want to like slash all of his buddies to hear that sound over and over again. It makes you very violent just to hear the cute noises they make. And, exactly. And for me, what I noticed last night as I was playing, one, I noticed how, I mean... Granted, he's a small little man, but Link, when he walks around, his little the little pitter-patter of his feet, I just found, I don't know, like the sound design, I, I don't usually think about those things in games. I don't think you usually think about those things actively, like what goes into mm-hmm. sound design, but this game is making me take a lot more notice as I'm, as I'm getting more and more immersed in it, just the, the care and attention to detail to little things like that. Yeah, it really jumped out at me, and you mentioned the pitter-patter. When you're getting ready to do that quick charge move, he Aww. kind of ramps up his feet, and it... <laughs> You know, and, and you can really hear it then. And also when you, you slash like a buzzy beetle, or not a buzzy beetle, I don't remember what they would be called in, in uh, the world of Zelda, but when you slash certain enemies and they flip back onto their shells, it almost sounds like a little coconut. And I don't know, everything has a certain kind of resonance to it that's just really charming. Mm-hmm, for sure. Were there any other uh, games that you've been uh, tackling or is Fire Emblem, I mean, I guess those 200 hours have kind of taken up all your time, plus Zelda. Yeah, it's been taking up my time than Zelda. And then actually a game that just released that took up a whole, you know, probably another 200 hours of my life back in the day was Puzzle Quest. Um, the, the the new one released, I, I believe it was September. Oh, don't quote me on this. I'm not even going to say the date. I'm not sure which day it released. <laughs> but the uh, Puzzle Quest Remastered came out recently. And I just remember putting so much time into that. It's like a simple um, like three bo- block puzzle game. Um, but what it adds, which is really interesting to me as an RPG fan, is it adds those types of role-playing game elements to it. So it is a puzzler, but then it's also got those um, really great features that make me go into a game for 200 hours. Huh, and this game's called Puzzle Quest? Puzzle Quest. Highly, highly recommend. Yeah. Um, I first played it on Nintendo DS, and then they ported it to Wii, and I think a bunch of other systems. But yeah, I definitely, uh, I, again, as far as games go, I milk that one dry. Cool. Well, I love um, I love my P-Cross games. I love Tetris. So I'm definitely going to have to check this one out. I'm going to have to check out P-Cross. That's when I hear a lot that I just have n- I've never even given that a try. So do you have any recommendations on which one to start with? Yeah, I would start with start with um, on Nintendo Switch P-Cross S1, okay. I guess it would be called because they're, uh, they're up to S3 now. But um, that's made by Jupiter and they've been making P-Cross games for a long time. Um, and, uh, and so they've got it down. It's got kind of all the extra options that makes the game really comfortable and fun and easy to play. And it's kind of like a Sudoku type number puzzle game, but at the end you've created a kind of a pixel art picture after you filled in all the correct slots. So, uh, it has that extra element of, of kind of achieving something once you've completed a puzzle before you move on to the next one. Gotcha. Yeah. I'll, I'll definitely check that out then. Yeah. 
And really quick, uh, I did mention Tetris. Um, ever since uh, they started having daily missions in Tetris 99, I've really been enjoying those. You go in and there's like four missions every day where you can, whether it's complete four lines while playing Tetris 99 mode against other players or go into the uh, local uh, marathon mode and you know get three T-spins or something like that. It's always different challenges. But when you complete them, you get tickets that you can ultimately trade for new themes and you can like skin the game to look like, uh, you know, uh, Super Mario Brothers or The Legend of Zelda or Donkey Kong. And so um, I'm really enjoying that. And, and the, the completionist in me wants to get all of those themes. I My viewers can't see or listeners can't see because they're not viewers. My jaw is dropped because I did not know there were daily challenges. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> so I'll have to add that game to my list of because I have those certain games every day that I go into. Like I still go into Fire Emblem Heroes every day to collect a couple, you know, a couple of the collectibles, uh, do a couple battles. I will now add Tetris 99 to the list. Yep. And and one more quick recommendation from me is River City Girls, which was a game I mentioned, I think, last episode that I was looking forward to. And it was just as cool as I was hoping. I mean, anybody who remembers River City Ransom back in the day or any of the sequels that have come out in years since, um, you know, will appreciate uh, this game from way forward. Uh, it's got great uh, pixel art, um, great kind of um, side scrolling beat em up gameplay, but with funny characters and a lot of funny dialogue and a funny twist. You know, traditionally in uh, in those games, you know, those those types of old school arcade games, you were the main characters, these two kind of punks named uh, Ricky and, um, what was it, uh, Ricky and Cuneo. And you're always like rescuing their girlfriends or something. Well, this time the boys have been kidnapped and uh, the girls, uh, Kyoko and Misako, have to rescue them. And they're hilarious. And there's just some great art in this game. And speaking of beat-em-ups, great cameos from characters from Double Dragon, which is another famous beat-em-up series. So... Just a lot to love in that game. Really cool music, too. I don't know why that reminds me of... I mean, this is totally a different game, different series, but that reminds me of... Remember the game Bubble Bobble? Oh, yeah. Do you know that, like... I mean, I don't I don't think I ever got there when I was younger, but Bob and Bob, the, the, the two protagonists of Bubble yeah, and Bobble... Yeah, cute dinosaurs or whatever. Yeah. Do you know they're actually... They're also saving their significant others. Oh, really? Right? I, I don't didn't, think I ever played through to the end of that game. I Yeah. I've never saved their... <laughs> the loves of their lives. I. That's too bad. Sorry, Bob and Bob. To keep, it was tough to keep <laughs> couples together back in the 8-bit, 16-bit gaming days. Well, yeah, sometimes they didn't even play test all the way to the end. It was just like, good luck if you get there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> all right, well, uh, that's it for pros picks. Now we're going to move on to players pulse. Um, this time we went on Twitter and Facebook and asked, uh, fans, which Nintendo switch games they were most looking forward to playing this fall. And we're going to start with, um, Michael Nanthachak, if I'm not totally massacring that name, who says that, uh, he is looking forward to Pokemon, of course, as I've been with the series since the beginning, but also interested in little town hero since game freak side games like pocket card jockey are very cool. And not only am I also looking forward to Pokemon Sword and Pokemon Shield, but I just had to to read this guy's note because he mentioned Pocket Card Jockey, which is amazing. Yes, Chris. I that, if we're talking about hundred hour games again, I mean that's the, kind of the theme of this this podcast, I guess. But yeah, Pocket Card Jockey, I put so much time into that, and I think it uh, it's worth noting that uh, Game Freak, you know, everybody associates them with Pokemon for good reason, but but these guys have always made amazing games outside of. The Pokemon series. You know, I remember Drill Dozer back on Game Boy Advance. Mm -hmm. And then like we just mentioned, Pocket Car Jockey. So anytime these guys come out with something that's a little bit, uh, you know, out of left field, uh, I always got to pay attention to that. And and uh, Little Town Hero is definitely one of those games. And it's got music from Toby Fox, who who did Undertale. Yeah. And I love the Undertale catchy. music. Yeah, it's super catchy. Yeah. I, you know, with Little Town Hero, I mean, Pokemon Sword and Pokemon Shield, I mean, what 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 can I say that hasn't been said, especially that now that we see what was it, Surfetch that just was shown? Oh yeah, is that yeah. is that the right name for the Farfetched with the the regal the regal little bird man with the leak? Um, <laughs> yeah, I think so. But that's very exciting, and and with Little Town Hero, uh, I haven't seen too much of, of it, but it's definitely a game that intrigues me, especially since it seems like a fantasy life that came out on on Nintendo 3DS a while ago, and I really like that game as well. Yeah. And the thing with Pokemon Sword and Pokemon Shield is, you know, I, I kind of get, um, you know, obsessed over all the little new features that are announced. Mm -hmm. But sometimes I just got to sit back and, and just remember that this is the first core Pokemon game, you know, coming to a console. 
For and sure. of course, you can take Nintendo Switch with you on the go and, and, and kind of play it on the go like you have all of the past Pokemon RPGs. But just seeing it on the big screen at home is going to be pretty amazing. Oh, yeah. It, it, it looks great. And yeah, see, every time they do like a new little news drop, it's it's definitely an exciting day on at least Twitter from what I've seen. <laughs> yeah. All right. Now, the next uh, response came from Queen, who says um, their pick here is Luigi's Mansion 3. Uh, the original was my first game on my first Nintendo home console, and I'm so excited to revisit it and introduce it to my wife so we can play as Luigi and Gooigi together. Oh, That sounds adorable. Yes. And, and Gooigi's great. You know, I love how he's used in puzzles from the little bit I've gotten to play of the game at E3. Uh, um, his inclusion is going to be great, especially if you get to play with uh, a second player. And I can't wait to play with my son with mm-hmm. this game. Yeah. And it comes out on October 31st, Halloween, which is absolutely perfect for this game. That is really great. And, you know, just that comment saying, you know, no- nothing makes me feel my age more than GameCube and Luigi's Mansion was my first Nintendo game. And... <laughs> <laughs> You know, I I remember GameCube and Luigi's Mansion. I I purchased those. I'm trying to think how old I was. I think I was get I was doing babysitting funds to get that. And and at the time I couldn't afford afford the Nintendo GameCube, so I bought Super Smash Brothers Melee. Didn't have the Nintendo GameCube, and I, I bought Luigi's Mansion as well. And I just remember reading through the manuals every day, just waiting for my money to be adequate enough to actually buy the GameCube, but. That used to be it in a in a pre-internet, pre-mobile phone world. Uh, that's what I would take to school and read during lunch was game manuals. It's, oh yeah, you know, and that's what you would get excited about when you couldn't actually be sitting in front of your your game. Yeah. All right, David R. Diaz uh, picked Mario and Sonic at the Olympic Games Tokyo 2020. He says, "I am so excited to see a new addition to the series and to test out story mode." Um, me too. I think uh, you know I've been playing a lot of Super Mario Party with my kids, and. It, it's drawn me in more than any other Mario Party game ever has. And now I'm, I'm looking at this thinking, could this be that next type of experience? You know, this, these great kind of sports mini games where we just sit down and have a lot of fun together, um, especially with the 10 kind of retro themed games that they've mm-hmm. announced recently, where you, you, it kind of looks like old school pixel graphics, almost reminds me of old games like Track and Field. Oh, looks yeah. Looks like that could be a lot of fun. I... You know, I've had the I haven't had the pleasure of playing the game yet, but I've I've had the pleasure of watching. Uh, and you know, I, I've, you know, my my first podcast uh, friend Doug Bowser, I got I got to watch him play against a few of my coworkers here, and um, them playing karate and surfing, and of course he chose Bowser. It was just really fun to watch. So even just being able to watch and have entertainment from that, I can only imagine it's just as fun to play. Yeah, it's one of those games that's definitely made to be played with 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 friends. Um, next up, Brent says, I'm looking forward to New Super Lucky's Tale by Playful. I've been keeping tabs on it for quite some time, being a fan of 3D platformers. Looks like it'll be a blast. I can't wait. Have you had a chance to play that, Chris? I did. I played it at E3 for the first time. I played the the, the demo version they had on the show floor and and really was interested. I went from honestly not knowing much about this game at all to, to being, well, I'm definitely going to play this when it comes out because... I'm a big fan of platforming games, and this really feels like it was plucked from that kind of golden era of, of N64 3D platformers, but obviously with you know modern graphics and mm-hmm. gameplay and everything. Yeah, um, you know, I, I echo your sentiment. It, you know, just playing it, it felt really great, um, really, really well polished. So definitely looking forward to that as well. Mm-hmm. And that one hits on November 8th, so we don't have to wait much longer. Next up, Scepter says, we're looking forward to traditionally non-Nintendo games coming to the platform. The Witcher 3 and Overwatch are some great games that deserve to be played anywhere and on the big screen. Couldn't agree more. Those are two mm-hmm, games that I'm really mm-hmm. looking forward to. Two games that you know have already got quite a huge, massive following, but for whatever reason, I just haven't experienced them yet. So the fact that they're coming to Nintendo Switch gives me a chance to jump in, and I'm really looking forward to it. I'm going to have to echo your sentiment again because, yeah, those are two games that have, have eluded me and I'm, you know, for whatever reason, uh, but I'm definitely looking forward to, I mean, Witcher 3, I mean, again, if we're going to go with the theme of what games do you play hundreds of hours of, I know Witcher 3 is going to be part of that that pedigree, so I'm, I'm looking forward to that and, you know, I'm, I'm looking forward to learning more about this bathtub scene. <laughs> I haven't heard of the bathtub scene, so well, I guess I'll have to keep an eye out for that. I well, <laughs> keep 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 a watchful eye out for that. <laughs> <laughs> Hope it's not like the bathtub scene in uh, what was it, Eternal Darkness, which was uh, 
like a shocking horror jump scare moment. Oh, yeah. Oh, man. There's another game. You know what's crazy is Witcher 3, Wild Hunt, and Overwatch Legendary Edition come out on the same day on October 15th. So, so you know, just... I'm either going to be spending all of October 15th, like just playing Overwatch online with people and, or, um, you know, engrossing myself in some huge fantasy epic quest. Yeah. I Well, yeah. He, heed my words now. Uh, I'll have to tell my boss, taking a vacation day. Or I'm going <laughs> to be sick suddenly and it's going to be very suspicious. Sick of working. Yep. <laughs> And, you know, that uh, those are all the comments that I jotted down. But people mentioned a lot of other games, too. Um, it's just really a lot coming up in the next couple months. And, uh, and something else that, uh, that, that got quite a few mentions was the fact that Terry Bogard will be arriving on Super Smash Bros. Ultimate in November as the next wave of DLC. So can't wait for that. Yeah, I, I'm a huge, as you know, Chris, I'm a huge Super Smash Bros. fan. And, you know, just getting, you know, the one thing I, I've loved, and I know other people have said this, but... It's so true is that Super Smash Brothers, it, it almost reveals new worlds for people to explore through the fighters that are integrated in the game. And like, mm-hmm. if you really look back to the first one, you know, when I played back in 1999, I didn't know who Samus was. I didn't know who Captain Falcon was. Um, and I think, no, I think those were the only two, but, oh, and um, Ness from Earthbound. So those those mm-hmm. those three franchises, I, I hadn't had a chance to play when I was younger. And it opened those worlds to me. So I, I think it's such a great platform. One, because it's a fantastic game in its own right, but it also opens you up to other uh, games that you may not have known about. Absolutely. Some of those earlier Smash Brothers games, uh, you know, introduced a lot of people to Marth, for example. Oh, yeah. Because some, yeah. Of, some of the earlier Fire Emblem games didn't always uh, make it to the U.S. So for a lot of people, that was their first exposure to uh, to Fire Emblem. And so, you yeah. couldn't get away from him because he was very top tier back then. So Yeah, yeah, he was <laughs> he was tough. But um, but yeah, Terry Bogart is, is a character that I haven't played a lot of Fatal Fury games myself, which is the franchise he's from, but I was Same. very f- familiar with him and had seen him in a lot of places. And now I'm just excited to go not only play as him in Super Smash Bros. Ultimate, but to go back and play some of those games and uh, kind of find out why all the big Fatal Fury fans are so excited to have him uh, join the roster. For sure. And just a quick recommendation for me, uh, Chris, I think you should cosplay as Terry for, for Halloween coming up. <laughs> <laughs> well, I do like to wear a baseball cap, there so I'm partway there. I'll, I'll get you a red hat. <laughs> <laughs> all right, well, next up is Warp Zone. Now, this is the quiz we have each episode where we guess games that came out 10, 20, and 30 years ago. And Katie, normally we have two people. We have two brains to, to figure these things out, but it's just you this time. I can do it, I think. Yeah. I have, don't I have quote me on that. Cut it out me. if I don't do it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, here we go. Uh, Ten years ago, this is in 2009, and the clues are Warner Brothers Interactive Entertainment published a Nintendo DS game from developer Fifth Cell in which you played with words to find creative solutions to puzzles oh. using animals, weapons, vehicles, and even household objects. Any guesses? Scribble knots. That's it. Scribble knots. That was a huge uh, month, by the way, um, 10 years ago. We had Marvel Ultimate Alliance 2, Kingdom Hearts uh, 258 over two days, Mario and Luigi Bowser's Inside Story. Uh, a lot of good stuff. Oh, I like Bowser's Inside Story. That one was fun. Yeah. I really like playing the uh, the uh, the remake on uh, Nintendo 3DS. Oh, yeah. I Yeah, I, I played the original, but... God, they, they, I can't add any more to my queue right now, Chris. I just can't. <laughs> All right. I'll keep my mouth shut. <laughs> no, it's okay. <laughs> All right. 20 years ago in 1999, uh, the clues are Konami published a side-scrolling action game for Nintendo 64 based on a mystical ninja that was beloved in Japan but not as well known here in the U.S. And a Mii costume of the main character was recently released for Super Smash Bros. Ultimate as DLC. Any guesses? Oh, no. <laughs> Yu Yu Hachiko? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Wait, the, wait. No. Give me, can I get a clue? Sure. Starts with a G. G? Starts with go. Go. Go, go. Go, go, Power Rangers. I don't know. I give up. <laughs> Not close at all. It's Goemon's Great Adventure. Nope. Never. Tough one. We, we, yeah, would, that, we would have been here for the, the rest of the year. So. Thanks. Yeah. That's a deep cut. No shame. No shame in that one. <laughs> and finally, 30 years ago in 1989, can, uh, sorry, Capcom published an action game for NES in which a cranky critter used his cane to bounce around various locations in the world and even the moon. In this adventure, you might solve a mystery or rewrite history. Any guesses? 
Oh, man. I mean, I want to say Mario is missing, but I know he didn't have a cane in it. And I don't <laughs> think it came out in 89. Oh, do, it might do, do, be do, based on a cartoon you could have seen in the afternoons back in the day. Oh. Uh, DuckTales? Yep, that's oh. it. DuckTales. You got there. Nice. I was trying to think of like grumpy pro- protagonists. <laughs> <laughs> Who would have a cane? Yeah, Scrooge McDuck. Yeah, okay, wow. Okay. Cool, well done. Better Just about that. Two out of three. No, no help whatsoever. No, none. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, now we're on to game forecast. Uh, this is where we take a quick look at some of the key Nintendo Switch games coming out in October. Um, first of all, on October 4th, we have Ghostbusters, the video game remastered from Saber Interactive. On October 8th, we have Ukulele and the Impossible Lair from Team 17. And Trine 4, The Nightmare Prince from Frozen Bite. On October 11th, we have Killer Queen Black from Liquid Bit. On October 15th, we have Overwatch Legendary Edition from Blizzard Entertainment and The Witcher 3 Wild Hunt Complete Edition from CD Projekt Red. On October 16th, we have Little Town Hero from Game Freak. October 18th is Ring Fit Adventure from Nintendo. On October 29th, we have both Resident Evil 5 and Resident Evil 6 from Capcom. And October 31st, we have Luigi's Mansion 3 from Nintendo. Now we talked about a lot of these a little bit earlier, but just looking at what's coming out in October, what jumps out to you? You know, yeah, as we mentioned, like October sixth or fifteenth rather is gonna be a you know, it's gonna one, it's gonna be a it's gonna be a day off and and two, <laughs> it's gonna be just a busy day going back and forth between Overwatch and, and The Witcher Three. Um, two games that again have escaped me up until now. Um you know, really, like, I, I played Resident Evil 5 um, when the original release back, I think it was 2005, no, 2008 or 9, don't quote me on that as well, not great with numbers, but uh, yeah, that one was really fun. If anyone hasn't had a chance to play Resident Evil 5 um, and wants a really fun co-op experience, I highly, highly recommend that, um, especially the Mercenaries mode. I, Although the, the main game is really fun, uh, I really enjoyed Mercenaries mode, and that's the mode where you um, try to get up to 150 combos without breaking, um, and you're just basically massacring hordes of demons, or demons, I'm sorry, zombies. Wrong game. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and Little Town Hero, uh, yeah, again, huge RPG fan, and I, I love to see what when Game Freak gets to um, kind of get out of that Pokemon shell. They're so good at that. I like to see what else that they can do with their game development magic, so looking forward to that one as well. Yeah, well, like I said before, there's so many games here that I've already uh, said that I'm looking forward to, but if I had to pick just one, um, it'd be Luigi's Mansion 3 because mm-hmm. that's uh, that's something I already know. I love the original game, and also Luigi's Mansion Dark Moon on Nintendo 3DS was great. And um, and coming out on, on Halloween, I can't think of a better you know way to, to spend... Uh, you know, After the trick-or-treating's done, my son and I can just sit down on the couch and play uh, Luigi and Gu- uh, Guigi and uh, just go through this haunted house. It's going to be great. But then also, uh, you know, um, you know, like I just said, I really enjoyed playing through The Legend of Zelda Link's Awakening. But for the part of me that, that uh, you know, hasn't kind of been able to experience that Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild type experience uh, for a while, really looking forward to The Witcher 3 Wild Hunt Complete Edition because although it's, you know, its own game with its own features and there's a lot of different differences there, just going into this big sprawling adventure we've got a lot of countryside to explore and a lot of different kind of game systems to kind of interact with um that's something that i can just really sink my teeth into so looking forward to that um not sure how i'm still going to fit uh, all the other games i've got to play into this but um that's a good problem to have yeah how much vacation time do you have can you maybe <laughs> loan me some some of these may end up being uh, like uh, holiday vacation uh, games because when we get to the holiday season, that st- tends to be where I catch up on some of this in between, uh, you know, uh, big, you know, family dinners and things like that. Yeah. Why spend time with the family when you can <laughs> spend time in Luigi's Mansion? <laughs> or, exactly. Or if you pick the right game, you can bring the family into it, too. Oh, absolutely. I'll just yeah. mom, dad, sit down, watch me play Witcher 3 for the next <laughs> 100 hours. Katie, thanks for coming on the show. Thank you so much for having me. Every time I get invited back, I'm pleasantly surprised. So thank you, Chris. <laughs> Great. We'll see you next time. We'll have that sandwich ready. That's it for this episode of Nintendo Power Podcast. If you have any comments or questions you'd like us to consider answering on the show, you can email us at nintendopowerpodcast at noa.nintendo.com. Also, we always appreciate it if you can leave a review and be sure to subscribe so you get new episodes as soon as they're ready. Thanks for listening and keep playing with power. Power.